of silent movie. You just have images and music. It's like two hands of the same body. The script is the right hand and the music is, a, is the left hand. The music has to fit with the story very precisely, which is not the same in a normal movie. In a silent movie, there is no musical break. There is no time when there is just dialogue and then the music comes in, you can spot it in. You have to write a piece of music that covers the entire film. Ludovic Bors composed the music. He composed the score of all my movies and all the commercial I did, so we are very close collaborators. The Hollywood sound is very specific, and it's not his natural culture. I mean, he's not a symphonic composer. So he had to study how it worked, and he had to follow the references, my structure, and his own sensibility, because he's an artist. So, so he had to find something to express by himself. Précisément sur la, la musique de film à Hollywood, euh, il y a des, des personnes et, et qui sont très 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 importantes pour ce style. Le premier pour moi, euh, je peux me tromper, mais c'est Max Steiner. Après, il peut y avoir euh, Eric Wolfgang Korgold qui a fait des musiques de Robin des Bois, Seahawk, tout ça. Franz Waxman, ça c'était un compositeur influent par rapport euh, à ce qu'on pouvait chercher à un moment donné. Bien sûr, Bernard Herrmann sur certains axes euh, beaucoup plus euh, modernes, on va dire, parce que le, la musique du film n'est pas située qu'entre les années 20 ou 30. Michel brought the scores of these famous composers to Ludovic so that he could hear uh, what these scores were and then he suggested that Ludovic go back and look at the source of those scores, if it was Stravinsky or Ravel or whatever, so that he would understand the source material and write music that worked for the story. So it is a beautifully crafted score and it is incredible.